A few years ago, when gas prices were at their peak, SUVs and trucks lingered on sales lots. People were snatching up the smaller cars. Now trucks and SUVs are giving automakers a healthy sales boost. Ford Motor Company sold more than 65,000 SUVs in April, the highest number for that month in company history. Small car sales, they actually fell more than 6% in the past year. So now there are deals that they've had uh, as they linger on the lot. So a lot better deal right now if you want to buy that smaller car, but then maybe the resale value won't be as high. They did give a couple of reasons for as to why. One, of course, the gas prices. Mm -hmm. A while ago, it seemed like they were never going to, sure. to yeah. go down again. Two bucks a gallon, Pretty who cares? Low right yeah. Now. yeah, buy whatever car you want. But the SUVs also, they're a little bit lighter than what they have been in years past. And then, Molly, this one was kind of interesting <laughs> to me. They said that higher seats for people who are older, it's easier to get in and out of the cars. That makes I, sense. It makes sense, I didn't know that one. I didn't know that one either. I think it comes down to whether or not you want to drive a smaller car mm -hmm. or a bigger car. And I think a lot of the people who want to drive SUVs, they're going to drive them, um, whether or not gas prices are up or down for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe we were talking about being in Minnesota and needing more space mm -hmm. uh, or for the winter. Yeah, I, and I think, you know, a lot of people like the idea of being safe. Kind of a bigger car makes you feel more safe. You sit up higher, you can see more. Maybe it's a sign, too, that the, you know, recession or, you you know, it's a sign that we're moving out of the recession, that the economy is improving, people feel more confident in how they spend their money in taking that risk. We talk a little bit, we have done it on the show quite a few times, do gas prices make that big of a difference in maybe your everyday uh, thoughts and your everyday kind of processes, what you're going to do with those decisions? I think back to a few years ago, Jason, and it didn't look like there was ever going to be that break in gas yeah. prices. We were at four bucks. We were at four bucks, up to five bucks in some areas. Yeah. And I, So I remember thinking like, well, what if eventually this gets up to seven or eight? I think two things happen. First, mm -hmm. people who drive SUVs and pickup trucks, instead of buying a new car, they were spending their money on gasoline mm -hmm. when gas prices were higher. Mm -hmm. So now that prices are lower, you have permission to take that eight or 10 year old SUV and go ahead and buy a new one. I think the other thing is that as consumers, we are very, very stupid people. And so we look at gas prices now and say, we can buy whatever we want now, not thinking about what is the gas price gonna be in three years. Well, even I just don't think we think next that long-term there's, there's also an environmental standpoint on it. I mean, I, I drive a Prius. I got that when I had a 45-minute... Oh, wow. <laughs> no, before that, it was an SUV, but I had a 45-minute yeah. commute. It was gas prices and Smart. just being yeah. more eco-friendly. And I, ha I had no idea that I would be in Minneapolis and my car would be parked in Park my garage. garage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe you didn't need to pay the premium. You laugh, Jason, right. but I mean, it, a lot of people do think about that now. They're a little more environmentally cautious conscience and you know Molly is a meteorologist she's very smart highly educated <laughs> oh highly <laughs> keep going I, I did the same thing I bought a car with a diesel engine trying to get better mileage but you know well what happened to your car <laughs> you may have heard about the Volkswagen recall wasn't my fault you it wasn't my fault I had good intentions, intentions. That's all that you did